can of Flyway. Super pale color. Look, there you go. Some light behind it. Yeah, dude. And by the way, this beer is totally like beer, man. Brewer approved. I generally prefer all my beer on draft. I don't want to spill. Ha! That's just pretty. I know I should be drinking this out of a Pilsner flute. That looked kind of porny. Who the fuck get draft beer anymore? So you see him pouring it out. It's really pale, crystalline, very bright. Bright is the official brewing term for a beer that doesn't have any haze, turbidity, such what. We don't want that in this beer. We want this beer to be very, very clear. I'm particularly excited to start this whole series off with a flyway because this is a beer that we, you know, I, I started Drake's in 2012. And this is a beer that Devon Buckingham, director of brewing operations, and I own. We started making this beer years ago just as a retail-only beer because, you know, we wanted you to be able to come into our pub and have a Pilsner because everyone should be able to have a Pilsner at their pub. We realized, like, as soon as we put it on tap, people were like, yeah, you should have had a Pilsner on. We were selling the crap out of this. You know, the first recipe wasn't perfect, and frankly, we started off with kind of an undefined goal here. We just wanted to make kind of a crisp yellow lager. First couple batches were less hopped. We weren't pulling in the German Pilsner malt at that point. Really like a very fun project for me to work with Dion because it was almost like a game of badminton, you know. I would write a recipe and we'd brew it and they'd be like, oh, what do we want to tweak about that? Oh, what do we want to tweak about that? And we'd kind of kick it back and forth and back and forth. And I remember the final, the final rundown was on the dry hopping. I mean, dry hopping's not very traditional in German beer. We were like, no, oh, I don't know. Just because it's not traditional German beer making doesn't mean it's not good. So we made two batches, dry hopped one, didn't dry hop the other, and had the staff just vote. This is what came out. This is a very simple beer in a lot of ways. This beer is basically made with four ingredients. Two, I won't even say malts, two grains in there. The vast majority of malt in this is a extra pale Pilsner malt from Germany. Then we cut it with a little bit of flaked American corn. I was on a Pilsner now, you put fucking corn in it, you ruined it. What is this, Budweiser? Well, it's certainly not Budweiser. When we taste it, we'll discuss why it's nothing close to a Budweiser. The corn is there to give it like a little, to lighten the body up a little bit, to give it a little bit of crispness, to give it a little bit of cut. No shame, we're gonna use it, we use corn. It's a, it's a thing. You know, a lot of brewers use corn in the form of dextrose, but they don't talk about that. Like somehow dextrose and corn aren't the same thing. It's like, Aah. So, you know, take that, uh, take that how you will. Really nice, really light. We've hopped the living crap out of this beer. And it's all one hop. This is a single hop beer made with a U.S. hop called Vanguard. There are only two growers left growing Vanguard. And this beer is probably responsible for a good amount of the entire domestic growth of Vanguard hop. The USDA basically runs a, a hop breeding program. One of their early goals back in the 70s was to make something similar to the German noble hops. And they started with Mount Hood, which is a pretty nice hop. Liberty came out of that program. I like Liberty quite a bit. Vanguard right here, which I think is the apotheosis <laughs> of the whole program. This, to me, is better than 80% of the Haller Tows I've ever smelled. It's spicy, herbals, almost like green tea, a little bit of fruitiness underneath. Never... Never look back once we started putting the, the Vanguard in here. We use the Vanguard in three spots in this. We use it for bitterness. Not the most efficient bittering hop in the world, given it's not a high alpha hop, but it still, you know, makes beer bitter. Use it in the Whirlpool. That gives you some amount of, uh, of like, a boiled hop aromatic, which is different than the dry hop. We also dry hop this beer. That's where you get that re those more green notes, because those are all volatilized off in the Whirlpool. Hops are layered on there really nicely. The, there's bitterness in there, but it's not extensive. If you want to know what a Vanguard tastes like, if you want to tell somebody else what a Vanguard tastes like, A, you're a nerd, but B, this is it. This is as nice an expression of this hop as I've had. Chris Miller up at Barry Essen makes a really nice steam beer with this hop. Maybe we're the only two using this hop. I don't really know. So, you know, good beer, right? Pretty happy to be drinking this flyway. I gotta do another hair flip because I think I last saw a barber in December. The zombie apocalypse, people. Look how y'all look. Bah! I don't know. Fourth and most important, no, not most important ingredient, but the ingredient that, that really underlies this whole beer is the yeast. We went through so many different lager yeasts, the German yeast, the Czech yeast, the Mexican yeast, and we finally, 
finally landed on this uh, yeast from Copenhagen. We assume it's the original Carlsberg strain. That's what our research tells us. Hewing this off the top of my head because I got a lot of shit stuffed in here, but it's all kind of like a musty attic right now. After trialing this yeast, we're like, that's the one. I don't know. I just love this yeast. We can make anything with it. And it really shows well in this. We started with just something gold and crushable, and we slowly defined it, and we kind of let the beer define itself a little bit too. This is the beer we have. It was fun drinking this beer with you guys. Thanks for tuning in.